You break it, you buy it. <laughs> What's up guys, Ian Sandusky from Lakewood Machine and Tool back here again for Practical Machinist. We're here at East Tech again, and right now we are getting to visit Shop Floor Connect. I'm here with my friend Jim. Hey Ian, how are you? And Shop Floor Connect, they are associated. Same company, yep. How's East Tech been to you guys so far? Pretty good, been great, good crowd. Good crowd, lots, lots of traffic. Yep. To check yep. it out. Yep. What are we excited about today with Shop Floor Connect? Well, Shop Floor Connect is a software product that monitors machine efficiency. Right. We monitor uptime, downtime, reasons for downtime, and production counts. What it is, is a measuring tool. Um, if you want a business, you have a bunch of machines, you want to obviously improve your bottom line and improve your efficiency, well, where do you start? What needs improvement? What's your baseline? What Shop Floor Connect does is it measures the efficiency of all your machinery and gives you identif and identifies where your bottlenecks are, uh, what are your main causes of downtime, and it actually gives you a roadmap to improvement. So like we were talking about for a little second before we got started there, a good scenario would be is if right now I have five CNC machines at my shop and a lathe, uh, five CNC mills in the lathe. If I, my guys keep telling me we need to put a new machine on the floor, this can help identify whether we actually do or whether we are not using our existing machines effect effectively and efficiently. Exactly, and exactly. It can do more than that too. It can monitor by operator. So you may have one operator um, that is more efficient than the others, and okay. you can use him to train the guys that uh, need to be brought up to speed. So it's really more than just spindle time on, spindle time off. Absolutely. Spindle time on and off, absolutely. And if the machine isn't running, um, we get the reason why. Right. And part of the way we do that is the, the part of the way we collect data. Um, normally when you have data collection systems like this, the software will somehow get into the machine controller. It's a bit of an engineering project to get the information out you need. And when I say bit of an engineering project, I'm understating it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we took a different approach. Uh, we have this device over here called the Shop Floor Connect Machine Interface. And uh, let me go back over here. Um, it's a pretty slick looking unit. It is, it is. Um, I don't want to cancel that. I'm trying to find the screen I so need. So this mounts straight onto the machine itself? Yes. This mounts right on the machine itself, and all we need from this is a couple of very simple signals. We need a signal when the machine is running, and if you're making piece parts, we need a signal when the machine completes a part. Right. See, that way we can check uptime and downtime, and we can also uh, measure production rates as well. Right. Now, one of the unique things about this is you can measure downtime, but if you want to improve downtime, you have to know why the machine is down. Right. Just knowing the machine is off doesn't really tell you. Anything. Exactly. And if you ask the operator, with the way a lot of these production monitoring software systems work, at the end of the day, the operator is supposed to go over to a terminal and indicate why the machine was down and for how long. File the reports and all that. Exactly. Right. But by then, you can't really do anything about it. Right. So what we do is is we, we, we monitor the machine uh, in real time. Uh, so we monitor the machine, what's going on in real time, and if the machine stops, we know that it stopped, and you decide what a significant stoppage is on a machine. So in one of your machines, you may say, all right, we're supposed to be running parts. If the machine stops for more, more than 10 minutes, Right. I want to know why. So I don't need to know if it stops for a minute and a half because someone, you know, exactly. dropped the wrench in the bottom. And Quick tool change or right. something like that, right? But if it stops for something that's a significant amount of time, you're going to want to know why it's down. So this allows the operator to uh, specify why the machine is down. And what they do is they pick off a list. So you create a specific downtime reason menu for every machine. And it's consistent across the board, so, you know, waiting for QC or whatever right. reason's on there. If the machine has stopped for longer than that, that preset amount of time, um, it, we, what we do is we do two things. We bring a downtime menu right up on the screen so the operator can see it, and we, then we inhibit further machine operation until they select the so reason. So you have to fill out the report. Have to fill no out the report and asked. get it makes a lot of sense and since it is from a drop down menu they're not wasting a lot of time trying to actually fill out exactly exactly reports. when we're looking for something we try to bring it right up right. and the nice thing about this is as opposed to the engineering project uh, part of the control we can have this installed on literally any machine in about three hours that was going to be my next question yeah. is what kind of machines can these go on is this strictly on three axis mills is it on lathes is it what are we across the spectrum on a these across the spectrum in these things we have them on three axis mills we have them on lathes on metal stamping presses packaging equipment air compressors Air compressor. Somebody wants to know the utilization of an air compressor, we can track the utilization of a compressor. Where do you find these going out most to in terms of what kind of machines? Are they um, mostly going on mill? I know they can go across the spectrum, but where is the utilization for these? It's, right it's, it's mostly in industrial applications. So there's fab shops, 
parts on chip making milling machines. Right. Um, we're trying to break into packaging with it. Um, so it's really across the board. It's any machine that runs, especially if it's piece part manufacturing. Right. Yep. Now when it comes to this machine, you know, we're, we're talking about how simple it is to connect to the actual machine or the, the readout, I guess. Do you guys come out and install these yourselves, or is this just sent to the, the customer and they install themselves? I don't know what the... Well, e either or. We offer a number of different ways we can do it. Yes, right. we can come out and install it ourselves, but any industrial electrician can put this box on there. All, it requ all we require is power and a couple of simple signals. Uh, another level we do is we offer installation supervision. Right. And that's when somebody from our factory goes into your factory, works with your electricians. After a, doing a couple, they, they get it and they end up doing the rest of the installations themselves. And once those are installed, this information is then sent out to the Shop Floor Connect software. The Shop Floor Connect yep. software. And what are we looking at here? This is just a, this is a, the main screen for the Shop Floor Connect software. So as your machines are running and starting and stopping, we have this equipment summary here, and the equipment summary shows you the oh, status wow. of your whole factory. Now see how these are all kind of color coded? Uh, green means the machines are running, and we want to see a lot of green on there, right? Just like we like to see solid green lights on the floor. Absolutely. Exactly. Red means the machine is down and it's unplanned downtime. Yellow means the machine is in changeover, so somebody's swapping jobs at that point. Right. We have another state in here that is planned downtime. What planned downtime is, is things like lunch or you have no work for the machine. Right. So if we're trying to rate machine efficiency, the fact that the operator can't run it while they're at lunch shouldn't count against the machine. Right. So we track that differently. Um, we track changeover time separately than the regular downtime too. Although when you do your efficiency reports, you can lump it in with downtime. But by tracking changeover separately, a lot of our customers have these changeover reduction programs in place. Right. You know, you want to make sure you have a shadow board with all the tools hung up necessary to do the changeovers and all that. So we track changeover separately for them. There's then one other state on here, and that's idle. And what idle, idle is, and there's only little bits of idle time, what idle is, is the machine is stopped and the software doesn't yet know why. In other words, we haven't popped ah. up the downtime reason menu yet for the operator to tell us I'm waiting on material. And you should essentially never really see that. That you, would be a quick blip it, and, and it's gone. When you see it on here, it's usually temporary because as soon as the operator selects the reason, it goes away and backfills the idle time with the real downtime reason. Now I'm guessing that the people who have put in like large numbers of these, what kind of things are they discovering about their processes? Are they saving money on their downtime? Are they saving money on putting in new machines that they need? Are they eliminating machines that they just don't use? What kind of things are you seeing that way? All of the above, all of the above. Everybody, uh, when, when it comes to downtime, when I talk to our customers or prospective customers about what causes their downtime, everybody remembers the catastrophes, right? <laughs> oh, this, this machine broke or this drive went, went and it took us six months to get another one. That's not what's killing you. Right. What's killing you is the repetitive, day-to-day -day little things that, in your mind, are just all oh, part of doing business, but you don't realize how much it accumulates over time. So, what, first thing, when people first install the this, this system, generally what they do is they'll pick the low-hanging fruit. Right. It becomes really obvious what's causing the downtime, and some of them are really easy to fix. Then you begin to move down the list of uh, most downtime, easiest to fix, and so forth. Um, there comes a time where that starts to plateau. Right. Right. So what happens at that point is we have another feature built into here called the alert feature. Okay. And what the alert feature does is it can signal, send a, test, a text message um, to anybody you want for any reason on here. So if the operator says, I'm waiting for material, well, the guy that's supposed to bring the material over gets a text message. Oh, wow. So it increases communication. Um, one of the things one of our customers did, we had a customer that had um, 20 machines and they did an average of eight job changes a day. Oof. Wow. So yeah, 160 jobs a day on average through this shop. It's a lot of time burn. Yep. And when, uh, whenever there was a job change, the operator would set up the job, and then the QC person had to come over and verify the setup, and then the operator would go ahead and run the job. Right. That process took about 20 minutes. Not bad. Times 160. That's a lot. So what they did was they created two new downtime reasons on here. One of them was waiting for QC approval, and the other was waiting for the operator. <laughs> so when the, when the operator got done with the setup, hit hit waiting for QC approval, QC, got, the QC person would get a, a text message on their phone, they'd come over, and when they were done, they'd say waiting on operator. That cut that 20 minutes down to a, a, about eight. Oh, absolutely. So they cut 12 minutes of changeover out of there. Now here's the cool thing about it. The alerts can escalate. Right. So if it takes longer than 15 minutes for somebody to come over, the boss gets a text. Right. I was going to say, I'm laughing because the QC guy, as soon as the operator gets to pass the buck to the QC guy and then the QC guy gets to pass it over, I guarantee you, if you've ever worked in a shop floor before, those are getting done a second they need to go. Absolutely. they just want to pass off to the next guy. Absolutely. So if you have escalating alerts where now the boss is getting a text, yep. 
I'm pretty sure you can be sure those are going to be switched over very, very quickly, yep. at least in the machine. Absolutely. So they were able to save a tremendous amount of time that, time and money that way. Absolutely. <laughs> because the, the alerts come in, with any downtime monitoring, downtime measurement system, there's going to come a time, if you're diligent about it, where there's not going to be anything left to improve. Right. I mean, you've done it. You've hit the holy grail. You're as efficiently as it can possibly be. Um, and then how quickly people can respond to the day-to-day -day exceptions is going to determine your overall efficiency. Absolutely. And, you can, and, and sometimes this can manifest itself in ways you might not know. Right. One of our customers had uh, machinery that they ran, and uh, they, were, they were boxing up parts right off the machine, and they had a, a, a shuttle that would fill up a box and then move over to, an, to another box, and meanwhile the operator had to box up the first one and put an empty there. Right. So the machine would never have to stop. Uh, and they had a couple of machines like that in the shop. Well, they had 16 machines and they had four machine operators, and the way they assigned it was one operator for every four machines. A lot right. of these didn't require attention very often. Uh, well, what they found was that they found excessive downtime when they were in certain jobs, and the downtime wasn't on the high maintenance machine. The downtime was on the other machines that that operator was responsible for because he was too busy tending the machine and closing up boxes. Oh, so what they, eh? what they did temporarily was they reassigned some of the work and instead of giving the operator a high maintenance machine and three others, they gave him a high maintenance machine and one other. And they spread the low maintenance machines around the other operators and they found that the efficiency everywhere went up. So at the end of the day, it had nothing to do with the machines at all. It nope. was which operators they were assigning to which jobs. Yep. So where an operator, if, if the operator was available, they could take care of a, a minor stoppage over here and get the machine running very quickly. Right. But he was occupied with something else at this machine that required a lot of attention. Now one of the cool things was one of the engineers that was there had a pet project years ago where he designed an indexing table. Okay. And what they do is they put 12 empty boxes on this indexing table, and instead of the operator having to come over every other box, he could come over every 12, take care of a bunch of them. Exactly. So, um, so he dusted this thing off, and at the time they said, well, the return on investment is going to be too long, we can't afford that machine. Right. Well, they looked at the numbers, looked at his quote for the machine, and said, we can't afford not to do this. So they ended up building the indexing machines, actually improved them so the machines can now box the things up themselves. And they're talking about taking it a pallet stacker and stacking them on pallets oh. and wrapping them. Because the, the, this, the, all, the downtime measurement was what told them that they were, could afford to do this. It gave them the this. information to make that justified decision. In Absolutely. There, right? Now, you find these going mostly into large factories or into smaller plants as well? Um, all of the above. All I mean, above one of our customers. biggest customers is GE. Right. They had it over five plants, uh, you know, hundreds of machines. They were actually able to eliminate a shift. Wow. They were running three shifts a day. They eliminated the third shift. These were five plants around the Caribbean. So um, they were actually able to eliminate a shift. And you do that at a big company like that. It's, you know, you save some money. Just finding enough efficiency through their monitoring. Absolutely. And then we have these in plants that have as few as five or six machines. Right. Because uh, they want to get a true measure of the downtime. Um, that seems to be a pretty, cur uh, for a lot of these um, systems that you think would have to only be in large plants that I've been speaking to guys from, it really seems like if you implement them early and you put them in at the foundation, mm -hmm. it really helps you build properly so you're not going to tear things down later, right? Everybody has their good habits built. Yep. You're finding out where your inefficiencies are before you get so bloated that you have to fix them in a very costly manner. Excellent. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. One of the other things about having this sort of interface is um, everybody's into cross training now. So they <laughs> want the operators, they want the press break operators to be able to weld and do everything in the shop. This provides a common inter interface across the whole factory. Right. So if an operator's reporting downtime on one type of machine, it's maybe different downtime, but the reporting is the same way on all the machines. Right. No, it makes and, a lot of sense. Yeah, it gives consistency. The training, uh, the learning curve is much is, is much shallower um, when, when we have a consistent interface, too. And speaking of interfaces, I do see another sure. box over there. Can we take a look at this? What are we looking at here? This is part of the Wintress line. <laughs> yes, it is. The Win Wintress is... Uh, Wintress makes controls for the metal forming industry. So Wintress controls go on metal stamping presses. Uh, this is our flagship control. It's called the Smart Pack Pro, uh, latest generation. We've been making these uh, flagship products for, uh, for since the, uh, 1985 was our first super control. Oh, wow. Yeah. So what this control can do is it can safely control uh, the, the ram motion on a, on a metal stamping press on a part right. revolution mechanical power press. Uh, we can provide timing signals based on the crankshaft position for all the ancillary equipment to ensure the material feeds in properly, lube systems are triggered when they need to. We have sensors that monitor the strain on the frame of the machine. Right. So we can monitor how many tons or how much tonnage of force it takes to form a part. So if the tool begins to wear or they lose lubricant or they have material problems, this can detect it and stop the machine. 
We can do sensors in and around the die to make sure the material's in place before the die closes. So you're not double feeding or Double feeding, yep. Make right. sure the previous part's out so we don't double hit. And is this something that goes on existing lines or is this built into new lines? Maybe? Um, it could be both, but most of our business is retrofit. It's on retrofit. Yep, we put it on existing presses. Um, and one of the other cool things we can do with this process monitor, we can do in-die measurement. Oh, cool. So we can measure um, parts, measure the parts as they're being made. So if you have a particularly difficult part to form, like one of our customers was making the inside bracket for a headlight right. out, of a, out of a steel that was notoriously inconsistent. So uh, sometimes it was hard, sometimes it was soft. Hard spots. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So if the material's too hard or too thin, you don't get enough form on it. Right. If it's too soft or too thick, the form angle, the overbend's too much. Right. We were able to measure form angle on the fly. While still in the machine. While it's being made, yeah. We would have That's a measurement insane. station where the where a spring-loaded stripper would come down and hold the part. Oh yeah. We'd measure the form angle. And here's the cool thing. What the customer did was they took our measurement and we allow this to interface with other equipment. Right. They built their own um, their own system using readily available servo motors. Yep. Uh, not servo motors, I'm sorry, stepper motors and yep. software. And they put a mechanical um, lead screw and tooling in the die where if they see the form start to get out of spec, they, they adjust the die on the fly it and bring it back right in. in. Yep, That's and bring crazy. it back The in. amount of automation that you can put into these things using something like this It is really is, and insane. when you think about it, all a stamping press does is goes down and up and hits. <laughs> Clearly there's a little more to it than but that. But there's a lot more to it than that and there's a lot more you can do. We monitor the force that the, uh, that the press is making throughout the cycle. So if we're looking at a part, this is the oh, force yeah. that's required to form the part throughout the cycle. We can set each one of these little bumps means something in the die. Right. We can set set point limits based on various areas of the die. So it allows us to really closely monitor things for you know, quality issues and everything else. It's really interesting stuff. Uh, if you are really into stamping, this is definitely something you're going to want to check out. If you haven't already, I feel like if you're really into stamping, you are very aware of this because it looks like it's probably one of the best. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to show Ian, us this Ian, thank you today. very much. Anything exciting coming up in the next year from Wintress or? Um, yeah, Software we got Connect? plenty of new features coming out for this. We've just released, uh, re re released a preventive maintenance module for the Shop Floor Connect. Perfect. So rather than tracking maintenance just by calendar days, we can track it by days, run hours, and cycles. Perfect. So yeah, we're, we're, we're pretty excited about a lot of the new products we've coming out. And you're gonna be here at East Tech for one more day. One more day, yeah. Where can we find you? What's the booth number? Booth number is? 5012. 5012. Thank, Thank you very much Thank you for having very us much. here. Have All a great right, day. Take care. Oh, I'm on. Right into it. That was awesome. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank, Thank you. you very much.